Hey everyone, I'm here this week to show you my fully semi-automatic, high-capacity, high-velocity, anti-tank, grenade-launching, chainsaw-bayonetting, Glock 99000S tactical rifle. Okay, so what we're talking about is basic gun terms. Why? So that regardless of how you feel about guns, you can have an intelligent conversation about them. So we're not talking about stuff like trigger and barrel. Everybody knows those things. What we're going to be talking about are terms that come up in the media and in legislation, legislation, that sort of thing, so that we're all on the same page. Number one, caliber. This comes up a lot, especially when people erroneously say that AR-15s are high caliber rifles. They are not. Caliber is basically the diameter of the actual bullet that exits the end of the barrel, not anything else. Not even this part of the brass, it's just this part. That's all caliber describes, and there's a lot of other ways to describe a round and how powerful a round is besides caliber. So this is a 223 caliber round that an AR-15 and all of the AR-15 variants shoot. Okay, This is actually quite a small, it's not large caliber, it's very small, we'll talk more about that later. Next term that we're going to talk about, silencer slash suppressor. The funny thing about this is everybody thinks they know what a silencer does because they, hey, they've seen action movies from Hollywood and it makes a little pew 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 sound when you've got a silencer on it. Uh, no. So in real life, a silencer, while that is a correct name, uh, a more accurate name is suppressor because a suppressor does not silence firearms. Let me... Let me reiterate this. A suppressor does not silence a firearm. Oh my gosh, if everyone could understand just this one thing, we'd be so much better off. Suppressors just reduce the amount of sound that, a, that the gun makes when it's firing the round. Why? So that the person shooting the firearm doesn't have to wear ear protection. Basically, any rifle round is supersonic when it comes out of the end of the barrel, which means it breaks the sound barrier, which means it's extremely loud. And so even though you're protected from the sound of, that's happening inside the firearm before the gases exit the barrel, you're not protected from the sound of the, of the round cutting through the air, which is very loud. The only possible exception to this are 22 LR rounds. When you put a suppressor on a 22 LR, they actually are super quiet because they're like this big in the first place. You can shoot a 22 without hearing protection if you really wanted to. But, but nobody uses 22s for anything other than target practice and occasionally self-defense. They're not exactly a threat in the real world. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have more questions about it, ask us in the comments, or heck, just send us a private message. We're all about private messages. And now we're going to talk about magazines versus clips. This comes up a lot as well, and it actually is an important distinction to make. So let me explain the difference. A magazine ta -da, is spring-loaded and it feeds rounds directly from the magazine into the chamber of the firearm to be fired. That is what a magazine does. A clip does not do that. A clip is used to quickly load rounds into a magazine to then be fired. So the order of operations, clip, magazine, rifle, slash handgun. I don't know why I keep saying rifle, any firearm, okay? Now, if you're wondering, okay, well then what's the point of a clip, observe, as I somewhat painstakingly load one round at a time into this magazine. And hopefully, it is already becoming clear that I am incompetent. No, <laughs> it is already becoming clear why there might be demand for a device that allows you to load a magazine a little bit faster than what I'm currently doing. It's the gloves. It's not me. It's the gloves. It's not the operator. It's the tool. Clips allow you to insert a five to ten rounds at a time into the magazine. So why does that distinction matter? Well, because if legislation is passed that is banning high-capacity clips, that's obviously very different than banning high-capacity magazines. Essentially, banning high-capacity clips is nonsense. Bump firing slash bump stocks. So bump stocks went from obscurity to infamy overnight last October 
uh, when the Vegas shooting occurred. Now, and a lot of people, it, it raised a cry to ban bump stocks. People couldn't believe that these devices exist. And a lot of that comes from not really understanding what a bump stock is. To explain what a bump stock is, we first have to understand what bump firing is. Bump firing is a shooting technique that uses the recoil of the firearm, and I'm going to grab one to kind of half demonstrate. I don't actually have a bump stock, but to demonstrate. <clears throat> so bump firing is a shooting technique that uses the recoil of the firearm to pull your trigger to pull the trigger away from your trigger finger long enough for the action to cycle and for the trigger to reset, and then it brings it springs it forward so that as long as you hold your finger still, the trigger will hit your finger and it will fire again immediately. And you can just kind of keep up that pattern in order to keep shooting very rapidly, very similar to an automatic weapon. Here's the thing though, bump firing can be done using virtually anything, uh, including a belt loop. That's actually the most common way of bump firing is using a belt loop to do so. And it can be done with virtually any semi-automatic firearm, not just the dreaded, terrifying, horrible AR-15. So where do bump stocks come into play? Actually, I want to keep this. Bump stocks come into play as, a, as an aftermarket product that you, can use, that you can attach to a rifle with a removable stock so that you don't have to use a belt loop. So that you, it makes it easier and it takes a lot less practice to master the technique of bump firing when you're using a bump stock. So, whether you want to ban bump stocks or not, at least now you understand a little bit more about what they do and what effect, if any, a bump stock ban would actually have. Last but not least, assault rifle versus assault weapon versus AR-15. So these terms are mixed up all the time. We covered it last week in our video, AR-15 does not stand for assault rifle 15, it stands for Armalite rifle, that's the name of the company that invented it. So assault rifles and assault weapons are totally different terms, believe it or not, they mean completely different things, and we'll explain why in a minute. So assault rifle is an actual term and it's used by the Department of, Department of Defense, and they define the term as, and I quote, a short, compact, selective fire weapon that fires a cartridge intermediate in power between submachine gun and rifle cartridges. All right, so let me reread that. A short, compact, selective fire weapon that fires a cartridge intermediate in power between submachine gun and rifle cartridges. Okay, an AR-15 can meet a couple of those requirements. So, if, so a cartridge intermediate in power between submachine gun and rifle round, a submachine gun is essentially a an automatic firearm that fires handgun sized rounds. Okay, that is what a submachine gun is. Uh, and rifle rounds are generally known to, are generally understood to be rounds that you would use for hunting. Uh, so an AR-15 meets that requirement because it shoots 223. Uh, and depending on your definition, it could also meet the short slash compact rule. Generally no, though, for civilian purchase, uh, the barrel length is set pretty standard. There's a minimum length of barrel that you're allowed to purchase as a civilian, and generally it's not considered short or compact. Now here's the real kicker though. Part of the definition of an assault rifle is the selective fire functionality of the firearm. Selective fire means that you can toggle between semi-automatic and either fully automatic or burst mode. AR-15s do not have that functionality. I'll even show you. Right here, you can see the safety on this Smith & Wesson MNP15, basically it's an AR-15 variant, you can see that I have two options. I have pew and no pew. There is no pew pew pew, okay? In other words, I have safe, which means it will not fire, which it technically should have already been on. In my defense, I've got the chamber flagged, nothing's happening, but I still should have had that safety on. Don't hate me in the comments. So, you've got safety and you've got fire which is semi-automatic, which means semi-automatic firing. There is no burst mode, there is no fully automatic mode, and every AR-15 variant in this country is the same way. It does, they do not have selective fire, okay? So they are not assault rifles. By definition, this is not an assault rifle. Therein lies the reason why politicians and the media made up this term called assault weapon because assault weapon is a different term than assault rifle, therefore can have a different definition. So what they used to define assault weapon are some relatively absurd things that have nothing to do with the, how fast the firearm can fire, the lethality of the firearm, or how powerful the rounds are. Nothing that actually makes a meaningful difference between firearms. They used ridiculous things like whether it has a bayonet mount. We'll go back to this gun. 
like whether it has a bayonet mount or a pistol grip or an adjustable stock. I mean, I mean, this cl this clearly makes the firearm a lot more dangerous. These are the the features that a firearm must have to be considered an assault weapon. The thing about these features I mentioned before, none of them have anything to do with how fast the rifle can fire. None of them have anything to do with how powerful the round is. So, uh, while this is technically an assault weapon, the term assault weapon is nonsense, and so it is meaningless. So, hopefully, you're a little more educated than you were before you started watching this video, and you can have better, more informed conversations about guns uh, with people with, with whom you disagree. We'll see you next week.